Disclaimer, the following stories are meant for entertainment only and not meant to cause harm to any individual or entity. Listeners advised. Hi guys and welcome to our first episode of Skull After Hours, where all things horror, creepy and disturbing will be talked about. I'm Nora. And I'm Kevin. And on this episode, we will be taking you on a ride with us on this park connector or PCN for short. Now, as you guys know, Singapore, where we're from, is a really tiny island. You could travel from one end of it to the other end in a day. So the PCN is essentially a great way to do that, especially if you're doing it on a bicycle. This PCN that we're on uh, actually leads us to Punggol, the furthest of the northeast region of Singapore. One of the oldest settlements, Punggol was believed to have existed 200 years ago before Singapore was founded. Today, it's been redeveloped into a new residential area. One of the most interesting things that Pongol is known for before it became a town was the Matilda House. So, Matilda House is one of the oldest houses in Singapore. Located in Pongol, it was built in 1902 and belonged to a Mr. Alexander Cashin, whose family history in Singapore can be traced back to the early 1840s. Now, the first owner, Alexander Cashin, was the son of the first Eurasian millionaire, Joseph William Cashin. Cashin made a fortune from his real estate business, as well as from the opium farm that he owned. It was named Matilda after the owner's mother. Due to the disuse and lack of maintenance, the house fell into ruins and inspired rumors of it being haunted and that it cannot be demolished. It was referred to as Ghost House or Istana Mananti, which means the Waiting Palace. Supposedly, evil spirits have occupied the estate and would brutally murder anyone who even dares to step on the threshold. The story goes that the Matilda House was actually set to be demolished, but when workers set about the process, three mysteriously died of unnatural causes. As a result, the demolition project was abandoned. Curiously, there were accounts of a lady with long hair actually sitting atop nearby trees. While the sightings weren't especially clear in the description, they all share a single similarity. She seems misty to your eyes, and her eyes seem to look through her long hair. But that's not all. There were also cases where people have claimed to have visited the house. One guy said he saw a white figure floating up the stairs and going right into the house. He wasn't even in and or around the premise of the house. He actually witnessed it while he was driving past the house. Another person insisted that he actually went inside the house and explored the place. And what caught his attention was the many noises that he could hear when he was looking through the rooms. And just when he was about to leave the house, he swore that he was being pushed out through the front door. Ooh, that sounds scary. Right? They're so scary. Um, Actually, today, the Matilda house is still standing. Uh, It's still there. But it actually went through a renovation process. So it is now like really beautiful. So it's like a, a historical landmark now. So it's been turned into that. And you, I guess you can actually still go there and see it. But mm. it doesn't look as creepy as, as it did before, I guess. Yeah, I'm guessing they get rid of the creepiness by now. <laughs> right. So the Matilda house isn't the only place that is haunted in Pungo. Tell me so, more. So allegedly, we have, in history of Pungol, the Sukcheng Massacre, or some people like to remember it, remember it as the Pungol Beach Massacre. Ooh. On 28 February 1942, during the Second World War, 400 Chinese civilians, victims of the Sukcheng Massacre, a Chinese term meaning, purged through cleansing, were killed by the Japanese on Pongo Beach. The Japanese military, suspicious of the Chinese population because of its experiences fighting in China, ordered all Chinese males aged between 18 and 50 to report to screening centers which were a cover-up for where unhinged soldiers would find the slightest reasons to execute them. 
Some of the men failed the screening based on their answers to questions, while others were condemned because of their occupations. In some centres, there were hooded informants pointing out those who were supposedly guilty of harbouring anti-Japanese sentiments. The victims were loaded up onto lorries and taken to remote areas to be executed. The Pongo Beach was one of the three main sites in Singapore where the Sukching massacre took place. The victims who perished were hastily discarded into the sea or left abandoned on the foreshore. The remains of some of the victims were discovered by beachgoers and fishermen. In March 1977, a skull was brought to light when a man dug a hole in the sand around the area. Twenty years later, a gold tooth was found near the shore. And until this day, numerous accounts have been reported of spirits, presumably victims of the Pongo Beach Massacre, wandering around the Pongo Beach at night. Some have claimed to have seen the spirits of the people that were executed on the beach while fishing late at night. Reports of the sound of gunshots can be heard, even though there's nobody around. And it's not just the beach that is said to be haunted. But there's also a narrow road that leads to the beach, called Pungal Road. Others have reported seeing a lady in red at the bus stops along the stretch of Pungal Road. Despite the development in this area, the dark past looms over Pungal Road, and anyone who has tried cycling down this road at night would attest to its sinister atmosphere, undoubtedly making it one of the scariest roads to travel in Singapore. But don't take our word for it. Why not see it for yourself? We hope you enjoyed this podcast with us. And don't forget to lock your doors at night when you sleep. With one eye open. And once again, this is Carl After Hours. I am Nora. And I am Kevin. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!